What's up everyone? In this video I'm going to be showing you guys one of the greatest mysteries in my opinion in Destiny. This unknown hive god is yet to be solved on what it is. I don't know if it's a female hive god or a male one, but there's a lot of interesting theories out there. And I believe this unknown hive god will be in Destiny 2. It's just an assumption of course. The reason why I think this is because they wanted to focus on Crota and Oryx's story and they're going to leave Nocris' story for Destiny 2 because they wanted like more involvement into that hive god. I mean, once again, that's just an assumption. I just don't understand why Nocris would be mentioned if there isn't going to be nothing about it ever. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. So that's why I think we will be seeing this hive god in the future. There is nothing about this in the lore whatsoever. So if you try to look it up, all you're going to really find is just theories about Nocris. You're not going to find facts about it, if you get what I'm saying. But what I'm about to be showing you is on the mission Regicide. And when you get to a specific part, you're able to scan these statues. A lot of people just pass this right up because, you know, they're just traveling through the map. You don't necessarily have to scan these. Anyways, I hope you guys end up enjoying this. If you do, consider leaving a like. It's greatly appreciated. But now... Now I'm going to go ahead and scan these and let you guys listen in to what the ghost has to say about these statues. And then I'm going to be telling you guys a bunch of interesting theories people have about knockers. But yeah, I'm going to shut up now. I know you guys want me to. Let's get to scanning these already. There are no markings that suggest a carving tool. They were assembled and crafted through some kind of hive spell. I think this one represents Crota. The marking suggests this is a hive god, but I don't recognize the symbol. Nothing in the world's grave file either. The name is... Nocris. It's Oryx. These statues, everything here was created before Earth was formed. I wonder how many worlds Oryx has taken. Okay, so you guys just heard that. Ghost doesn't really know who this hive god Nocris is. But as you can see, the statue is right next to Crota. And Oryx is in the back. So obviously, whoever Nocris is, is more than likely equivalent to Crota. And as you saw, Oryx was centered in the back. So I presume that he has the higher status than them both. Now this is when the theories come in. There is a lot of speculations out there, but I'm going to be discussing a few of them with you. And maybe you guys can have a discussion in the comments on what you agree with and what you don't agree with. And maybe you have your own kind of speculation on who Nocris is. Okay, so first I want to bring to light, I'm not exactly sure how this is pronounced, it's in Hebrew. Nokri or Nokri or something like that, but as you can see it is missing one letter to spell out Nokris Anyways, this means adulterous, adulterous woman, alien, aliens, extraordinary, foreign, foreigner, foreigners, stranger Okay, you get the point. So that leans me toward the speculation that Nokris is a female hive god And one of the interesting theories someone had is this could be Crota's sister Now I know what you guys are thinking. Wait a minute. Don't we fight Oryx's daughters? In the throne room? Yeah, we do. But we don't fight Nocris. Maybe he had a third daughter that ended up passing away, and this statue is a remembrance for her. Once again, it's just a speculation. Alright, so another speculation, but I don't know exactly if this is a possible one. Because if you guys didn't know, Oryx started out as a female. That went by Arash, or something like that. A-U-R-A-S-H. That's Oryx's original name. Before the worm consumed her and turned her into a king. And then after he killed his sisters and taken on the worm with the secrets, he ended up becoming Oryx, the Taken King. But uh, I'll leave that for a different video in case you guys don't know about that lore. Anyways, this is a pretty interesting theory. This person believes that Nocris is the deceased mate of Oryx, possibly the mother of Crota. And this person said in the Cathedral of Dusk lore, it kind of hints at that. As you guys can see here, the lore for it is, it was there they found what the warlocks named the Cathedral of Dusk. A high burial site for what? 
a former master of orcs, comrade, lover. It was vile and obvious that orcs never expected the light to reach so deep inside his throne to such an intimate space, but he didn't expect a lot of things, like a guardian training ground atop the husk of his dead ship. Here, this person said Bungie gave them a possibility that orcs had a lover or a mate of some sort, and was grief-stricken by the loss of her, and that he seemingly went against Hive's beliefs and built a shrine to mourn her. And this was in contrast with the uh, family man Oryx, as well as Oryx's desire for vengeance. And also this person noted that the Books of Sorrow doesn't give a hint to the identity of Crota's mother. In case you guys don't know, the Books of Sorrow was written by Oryx himself. So yeah, this guy proposes that Nakris died and her resting place is in the Cathedral of Dusk. Alright, so for this next speculation I got for you guys, once again it was from a Redditor who enjoys reading the lore and trying to solve mysteries like this. The Redditor has said when Ghost scans Nakris' statue, he mentions that there is no info on Nakris. And also his name doesn't even show up anywhere in the Grimoire. This person believes that he was wiped from time. Kind of like marked for negation, if you will. So basically he says, what if Nakris had some kind of involvement with the Vex or the Vault of Glass and has been forgotten in time? This is a decent theory. He did say that he was you know, doing research on Nakris and he didn't end up seeing anyone talking about the Vex being in correlation with Nakris. So he just thought he would throw it out there. So I'm just throwing it out there to you guys as well. Was Nakris lost in time? Kind of like how Praetith was. He wasn't fully erased from existence, but he was lost in time. A few other theories I got for you guys, as you can see, this guy said, Nakris is undoubtedly the tainted being that came before the three cruel wizards that fell to the worm's temptation. This person had said, maybe one of Oryx's sisters took on a new name and gender, much like he did. That could be a possibility, but Oryx slaughtered his sisters. Why would he just, you know, put a remembrance of one of his sisters and not both of them? So I don't think that one's true. Okay, so this last theory I got for you guys, and a lot of people have made speculations to Nakris being Eris. There's a lot of different theories out there, but I'll go ahead and read this one for you guys. This writer said, I've heard discussion before about Eris Morn and the Nakris statue before, but I just put things together. First off, I just want to mention Nakris, Eris, they're similar. I mean, I'm not going to say that's the reason why Eris is related to Nakris, but let's get into this Redditor's post. Eris seems awfully attached to that hive rock of hers. What do magical hive rocks usually contain? The souls of Ascendant Hive. He believes that Eris only survived the Hellmount with the help of the rock that she found, aka the soul of Nakris who is most likely Crota's sibling or Oryx's child based on the positioning of the statues on the Dreadnought that we just seen. Considering that Nakris' existence was wiped from the world's grave, he suspects that he or she, once again, I think Nakris is going to be a female hive goddess, got into some kind of dispute and was banished to imprisonment by Oryx or Crota in the Hellmouth. Oryx's statue is the only trace of Nakris, well, since Oryx still seems to care about his children. He wanted revenge, after all, for Crota. My theory is that Nakris is the hive equivalent of Varix and insider aiding Eris, just as Varix helped Petra. Whether Nakris desires merely power and vengeance against the hive or wants to truly help us, but without the information that Eris received from Iraq, we would not have been able to defeat Crota or Oryx. If this speculation is true, then it is possible that our best chance of defeating the darkness is to gather support from our current enemies by replacing their leaders. Should Nakris lead the Hive and Barracks become Kel of Kells, as many have speculated, the last city will be a lot less isolated. If we can trust them, of course. This person that had mentioned, feel free to discuss this uh, theory he has. He just felt like it made sense, and it is clear from the Grimoire that the Fallen and Hive were once good, you know, rather than evil. Some person left in the comments, he doesn't necessarily think that the rock contains Nakris' soul. He thinks it contains Tolan's, uh, who was killed by the Death Singer in Crota's throne world. And Tolan's essence is still floating around in the high throne worlds as evidenced by the Grimoire card you get for killing Oryx. Also, from that Grimoire card, he is still speaking to someone on the other side. So in order to get into Oryx's portals on the Dreadnought, we need to become 
Ascendant Hive. Eris somehow knows how a guardian, a creature of the light that the Hive had not previously encountered, can do this. Knockers presumably wouldn't know how a guardian can pass as an Ascendant Hive since, you know, he or she has never encountered a guardian before Eris. So yeah, that's basically how he's trying to debunk this theory. He says it seems much more likely that another guardian with, you know, knowledge of the Hive would know how to do this instead of just another Hive Goddess. Uh, once again, that's another possibility. And I will mention real quick as a side note before I completely wrap up this video, I just thought I'd throw out a bunch of theories about Nakris in this one so you guys can have more to discuss about. But in the PvP map, the dungeons, I glitched out of the map and I noticed inside this crystal in the map, there is a wizard. And as you can see, this is what the wizard looks like. It looks similar to Omnigal and it looks extremely powerful as well. Um, I don't necessarily know what wizard this is, but I know it isn't a normal wizard that we typically fight. This is definitely a more powerful wizard. So is this Nakris inside this crystal on the PvP map, the dungeons? I don't know. <laughs> this is just another possibility. If so, when is she going to be set free? Or is she ever going to be set free from this crystal? I think more than likely we'll end up seeing Nakris in Destiny 2. I don't see honestly why they wouldn't put him or her, once again I think it's a her though, inside Destiny 2 just because, well, they mentioned Nakris and a lot of people was curious about this. So why wouldn't they add this? Maybe it was just cut content from the game. Maybe they planned on adding this in Destiny and you know how the story writer or whatever ended up quitting. I'm sure you guys have heard that story. If you haven't, just Google it you'll find out, and they ended up having to pretty much bullcrap the storylines. That's the reason why the dialogue isn't that great in Destiny. Like the cutscenes and the involvement on characters, there was supposed to be a lot more involvement in detail. But once again, they had to cut content and rush out the game because the story writer ended up quitting. I don't remember the exact reason, but I do remember hearing quite a bit about this back in the day, and that's the reason why Destiny ended up being so plain with dialogue and cutscenes. But yeah, he ended up taking the story with him, so they might end up adding Nakris in Destiny 2. Don't know for a fact, but I'm almost certain they will. Anyways, yeah, that's about wrapping up this video, everybody. Hope you guys found this enjoyable and it's something different than what you typically see on Destiny. Because I know a lot of Destiny YouTubers just follow bandwagons and they just upload similar content. And I'm trying to be different from other Destiny YouTubers so I can stand out of the crowd a little bit more. I just thought I'd make this. I found this extremely interesting since this is an unsolved mystery in Destiny. And there's a lot of speculations and theories on this. So, you know what? I thought about making a video of this so more people can discuss this and try to maybe solve this. But yeah, I'm out of here. Thanks once again for taking the time to watch. And if you want, maybe share this with some of your friends. Maybe they'll find this interesting as well. Until next time, though. Peace.